no electricity, no furnace, no insulation foam behind the walls, no thermostat to turn back on. When modern homes fail in winter, they don't fail because it's cold. They fail because every system they depend on stops at the same time. Heat disappears first, then air starts moving where it was never meant to move. Cold replaces warmth slowly, silently, without mercy. Most people believe surviving winter is about producing more heat. It isn't. It never was. Survival is about controlling where heat is allowed to go, and more importantly, where cold is not allowed to touch. The moment air moves through spaces you didn't design to control your warmth is already leaving minute by minute. Long before gas lines, power grids, or sealed houses, people survived winters far harsher than anything modern cities face. Not with bigger fires, not with thicker walls, but with systems. Invisible systems built from air shape, gravity, and discipline. This is the secret heating system inside a teepee. And the moment the grid goes down, it still outperforms modern homes. When there are no walls, no bricks, no concrete, no insulation packed between wooden studs, modern logic says you lose. Ancient logic says something else entirely. Plains tribes did not build typees in a cone shape by accident. They built them that way because air obeys geometry whether you understand it or not. A box-shaped room traps cold air in corners, cold pools there, stacks there, weights there, and once it stacks, it starts stealing heat without needing wind. A cone does not allow that. Inside a teepee, there are no dead angles where cold air can sit and accumulate. Warm air naturally rises toward the center. Cold air is forced to slide downward along the outer skin of the shelter away from the living core. That movement is not incidental. It is the system working. Here is the how-to because this is not style. It is control. First, keep the shape clean. A steep cone matters. If the walls slump outward, you create a wider, colder upper volume that heat must fill. So you tighten the cover, keep the poles high, and keep the cone sharp. Second, protect the center line. Don't clutter the middle with gear. Don't hang wet items where rising warm air needs to travel. Keep the center open so warm air rises straight and predictable. Third, push living activity inward. Your body is the heater, so you sit work and sleep closer to the central core, not at the edges where cold slides down. Fourth, treat the outer ring as a cold zone. That is where cold air should move. If you build your bed against the skin, you place your body inside the cold boundary layer. In a tippy, the shape prevents pooling. Heat rises in a narrow, controlled column, always predictable, always centered, always recoverable. No flat ceiling where warm air spreads out, cools down and dies. No upper corners where heat stagnates and leaks away unnoticed. No cold corners where your body pays the bill all night. This system does not trap heat. It guides it. Ethnographic records from Lakota Cheyenne and Blackfoot winter camps show the same geometry repeated again and again across generations. Not because it was tradition, but because it worked. A tippy does not attempt to overpower winter. It rearranges the rules winter must play by. Thin walls, minimal material, no luxury, but air behaves exactly as intended. Survival Conclusion You don't need thick walls, you need air that behaves. When firewood is scarce, when fuel must last through the night, when a large fire would kill you faster than it saves you, the mistake is thinking fire exists to heat space. Inside, a tippy fire exists to control airflow. The fire is small, low, disciplined. It does not roar. It does not attempt to heat the entire shelter because heating the entire shelter is a luxury problem. Survival is a control problem. Its primary function is creating upward pull. As smoke rises through the smoke hole, it pulls stale, cold air with it out of the shelter continuously. This creates a one-way system like a passive ventilation engine. 
Cold air is drawn in low. It hugs the outer edges. It never crosses the central living zone. The center remains the protected core where bodies sit, work, and sleep. Now the how-to because this is where people ruin the system. First, keep the fire centered and low. Not against the wall, not near the doorway. Low fire means stable layers, warm air, up the middle cold air, sliding down the skin. Second, control flame height, not just heat. Use fewer sticks. Feed it slowly. A tall flame creates turbulence that stirs the cold boundary layer into the core. Third, manage the smoke hole like a valve. Open enough for steady draw. Not so wide that wind backdrafts smoke into the shelter. If wind shifts, you adjust because airflow is the system. Fourth, keep moisture and wet gear out of the center line. Steam adds condensation. Condensation steals heat. Your fire can be perfect and you still lose warmth if humidity rises. Here is the twist. A bigger fire can break this system. Too much flame creates turbulence. Turbulence mixes the layers. And once the cold boundary layer mixes into the center, you lose the warm pocket. So more heat can actually make you colder because it destroys control. This is why soot buildup inside winter tippies was minimal. Archaeological findings and ethnographic accounts confirm it repeatedly. No choking smoke, no blackened interiors, no suffocation, because airflow never stalled and smoke had a predictable path. Modern homes rely on powered ventilation and fans. When electricity fails, air stagnates, moisture accumulates, condensation appears, cold settles in permanently. The tippy never needed power. It needed balance, a small fire, a constant upward draw, predictable airflow. Survival conclusion. Fire is not for warmth. Fire is for control. When the wind doesn't stop, when it circles the shelter, when it searches relentlessly for gaps. Modern homes fight wind by sealing it out completely. When seals fail, everything fails at once. One crack becomes a pipeline. One draft becomes a constant heat leak. The teepee does something far more intelligent. It does not fight the wind. It guides it. The entrance is never random, never accidental. Field records show tippies consistently oriented according to prevailing seasonal winds. Not as superstition as engineering. Wind enters low. It moves along the outer wall. It does not shoot across the center. It does not hit bodies directly. The warm pocket at the center remains intact. Wind is allowed to exist. It is allowed to move. But it is never allowed to touch bodies. This distinction matters. Cold air only steals heat when it makes contact. Movement alone is not the enemy. Contact is. Now the how-to, because this is where survival is decided. First, orient the door downwind or crosswind, never straight into the gust. If wind blows directly into the entrance, it pierces the warm core. Angling the door forces wind to slide along the skin instead. Second, keep the door low and narrow. A tall opening invites pressure surges. A low opening keeps airflow laminar and predictable. Third, treat the outer ring as a wind channel. Do not place beds, children, or gear against the skin. That zone exists to carry moving cold air safely around the core. Fourth, adjust constantly. Wind shifts during the night. Smoke direction tells you immediately when airflow changes. If smoke bends toward the center, the system is failing and you correct it. This is why blocking wind randomly fails. Blankets over doors, towels and cracks, plastic on windows. It helps sometimes, but block in the wrong place and you create pressure differences that suck cold air through unseen gaps. You seal one leak and create three. A teepee avoids this by giving air a planned route. In, around, out, without touching the core. It exists, it moves, but it never reaches skin. Survival conclusion, you don't stop wind, you keep it away from bodies. When the ground is frozen, when moisture never leaves, 
When lying down means losing heat hour after hour. The ground is the most aggressive heat thief of all. Not because it is colder than air, but because contact makes heat transfer relentless. Air can forgive mistakes. The ground never does. Teepees solved this problem without floors. They did not try to warm the earth. They broke contact with it. They created dead air, layers of dry grass, animal hides, spacing that was never crushed flat because insulation does not work when it is smashed. The lowest layer was always protected from compression because compressed insulation fails. It stops trapping air. It becomes just another cold surface. Now the how-to because this is where most people lose the night. First, build thickness by layers, not weight. More layers are useless if you flatten them. You want volume, not mass. Air trapped inside loose material is what slows heat loss. Second, protect the bottom layer at all costs. Do not kneel on it. Do not sit on it. Do not sleep directly on it. Once the bottom layer collapses, every layer above it loses effectiveness. Third, separate sleeping weight from insulation. Use branches poles or rolled hides to slightly elevate the body. Even a few centimeters create a thermal break that changes everything. Fourth, manage moisture aggressively. Sweat turns insulation into a heat conductor. Wet grass, wet hides, wet blankets, all steal heat faster than bare ground. If something gets damp, it moves outward, not under you. Archaeological excavations of winter camps show bedding layers rebuilt repeatedly throughout the season not for comfort, for survival. Here is the system logic if your ground layer fails. Every other layer must work harder. Your fire must burn longer. Your body must burn more calories. Your fuel runs out sooner. Ground control is fuel control. And fuel control is survival, is survival conclusion. You don't need warmth under you. You need separation. Modern people heat rooms. Ancient people heated zones. A tapai was never meant to be warm everywhere. It was meant to keep people alive. That changes everything. Sleeping positions clustered near the center. Bodies shared heat. Space was minimized intentionally because every extra cubic meter of air requires energy to heat. The tippy accepted this reality. Heat was never wasted on empty space. The living core was protected. Here is the modern illusion room temperature, a number on a screen, a promise that the whole volume will be equally warm. That promise collapses the moment power fails. In survival conditions, uniform warmth is not the objective. Protected warmth is. So the system focuses on where bodies are, where hands work, where children sleep, where breath accumulates and stays inside the core rather than being stripped away by drafts. This is why the teepee functions like a microclimate machine, not because it produces massive heat, but because it concentrates heat where it matters and refuses to waste it elsewhere. And that is the hard truth. You can survive in a space that is cold at the edges if the core is stable, but you cannot survive in a space that is warm on average while drafts touch skin and the ground steals heat all night, the tippy chooses the core every time. Survival conclusion, heat people, not rooms. Modern homes are fragile systems. They rely on electricity, fuel delivery, sealed environments that fail together. And when they fail, they fail in a familiar sequence. Power goes out, heat stops, air begins moving through leaks, moisture rises and cold settles into the structure like a permanent occupant. The teepee relied on none of that. It relied on air behavior, human placement, discipline, not comfort, not convenience. Discipline. Ask yourself three questions. If the power goes out tonight, how long does your house retain heat before you start burning extra calories just to stay alive? Where is cold air entering right now? Not in theory, but physically, under doors, around windows, through attic gaps, 
Are you heating space or protecting survival zones? Because if you are heating space, you are paying for empty air. If you are protecting survival zones, you are buying time. And in winter, failure conditions, time is not nice to have. Time is everything. The difference is life or death. When the grid fails, technology disappears. Understanding remains. Ancient people did not defeat winter with fire. They defeated it with systems, not comfort, not convenience, control. They didn't build stronger shelters. They built smarter ones. And that knowledge still works right now because winter hasn't changed. Heat still moves the same way. Air still obeys geometry. Contact still steals warmth. Wind still punishes mistakes. The only question is whether your shelter is a machine or just a box you hope stays warm. The teepee was a machine, a survival machine, and the moment your modern system shut off, that difference becomes real.